So this is completely unrelated to the rest of the video, but um, the reason I haven't shipped out any A-arms in a while is because I cannot get a reliable source for the Heim joints I use. They've been on back order. I've got them airing me some in. I should have them in two weeks. I know there's about a dozen of you guys that have been emailing me about A-arms. The reason I'm taking any deposits is because I don't have the Himes in stock. But I should have some soon, and I ordered about $600 worth of Himes, so I should be able to make a bunch of um, A-arms. So far, I've got jigs for Foreman 450, Foreman 500, Honda 300, Rubicon Rear, uh, Rencon. So I've, I can do a bunch of different bikes now. So if you um, the wanting A-arms and you emailed me, just go ahead and shoot me another email. I'm going to try to get back to everyone, but just in case I don't, um, shoot me another email because um, I'll have the Heim joints here. Hopefully by Friday, if not Monday, and I'll be able to start making arms. On your bike, you got to do a lot of maintenance things because you never know what the previous owner had done. So I'm doing a valve adjustment. Um, just to make sure you have any tight valves. Intake valve was perfectly in spec. Um, exhaust valve was just a hair loose. The spec on these valves is pretty tight. It's three thousandths or .003 inches. Um, that's called three thousandths, by the way, or .008 millimeters. Um, because twenty thousandths is uh. uh half a millimeter. Anyways, so there's the valves. Looks pretty clean there. I don't think these oil change oil is a little dirty, but um, motor looks good. You can see the cam. You can look over like, the cam, see the wear on the cam. It kind of tells you how the motor's been maintained. Um, very little wear on the cam. To get it on TDC, you pull out these two plugs. You use the nut to rotate the engine clockwise. And then you look through here. So you can see the timing mark. You can see it's on T. You can kind of see it. Um, anyways, you get it on TDC. Check your valves. Lobes should be pointing down. Both should have a little slack, but if lobes are pointing down, you're on the right TDC. And then uh, check your valve clearance to the fuel gauge. 0.03 is a really tight spec, like I said, so I set these at 0.004 um, because I do stupid things with my motors, and I'd rather have a little bit of tapping than have a valve get tight and cause all kinds of weird issues. But yeah, preventive maintenance, it's good. Mostly snorkel, I'll do a quick video in case anyone actually has one of these and wants to snorkel it, kind of unlikely. But um, 1.5 inch AVS works well. This bike actually has a larger inlet to the airbox than a Foreman 450. Um, why is that? I don't know. It's only a 250 or whatever, less than 250. Um, but the three-wheelers have a lot of airflow. So this one has a lot more airflow than a Big Red even, in my opinion. Um, so you can put a one and a half inch coupler on the outside, which means the inner diameter is nice and big, of the airbox, one and a half inch straight 45, one and a half inch 45, a long piece of one and a half inch ABS, ran out of ABS up here, that's a street 90, uh, vent street 90, like a sharp 90. And you come over to a regular vent 90 after you come through the fender liner and then up through here. And I just used one of these um, pipe tie downs to bound it. And it's pretty on there. You can shake the whole bike with a snorkel. Generally means it's good to go. Um, this isn't the prettiest one I've ever done. I may end up changing it, but it was quick. Two self-tapping screws threw it on there. Good to go. And then for the vent lines, you have your two carburetor vents. Boom, boom. Um, they both run up to into here, which is only a little lower than the snorkel. Um, and they can dip under for a second. I don't like the look of vent lines on my snorkel. And then crankcase breather. I made a reducer. You can kind of see down there. Um, into this smaller tube. So I had to drill a bigger hole in my airbox. Plenty of airflow. Um, and that's going to rent like that. You can put a zip tie, but breeze in the airbox lid. Melted a hole in the airbox lid with a big tapered punch and a torch. It's still pretty hot. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty sweet to snorkel, pretty easy. Um, probably need to snorkel the gas cap eventually. I'm going to put the gas tank there it is. Um, to do that, you just pop this off and tap it and thread in a barbed MPT fitting. I'm not going to mess with that quite yet. Um, but yeah, those are your vents. Oh, then there's the rear diff too. The rear diff breeds right here. So there's three lines. Two carbs and rear diff. I didn't bother snorkeling the rear brake thing because, um, well, it's going to get water in anyways. Those things never seal. But yeah, that's how you snorkel this bad boy. Um, looks pretty good. About to do the lift, and then we're going to put some bigger tires on it and see what she can do. On there, and the wheels are on backwards right now, just because it looks funny. Um, also, I started the lift. I decided to leave this mounted where it was. I may bring it forward later. Um, but for now, because the way the suspension works, if you lift it, you also bring the wheel forward. So it gives me plenty of clearance um, for a much larger tire. Also, I'm going to bend that bracket a little bit. But yeah, it's just a spacer lift, pretty huge spacer lift, but there's no CV joints to worry about, so you can get away with it. Um, obviously, you got to weld it so it doesn't twist. You're going to weld the bottom right here to the mount. It's a couple of tack welds. Good to go. Looks pretty hilarious right now. Also, when this suspension flexes, it changes the steering alignment a lot um, because of the nature of the suspension and its simplicity, which isn't a huge deal. 
Um, so you have to get it aligned on the ground at the sag with you on it. Otherwise, you're going to be riding around with some really, really bad toe. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. Looking meaner. Tires on here, high flotation setup. Um, the only thing that's a little weird is the alignment's kind of funny still because when you lift this thing, the trailer arm suspension actually changes the caster a lot. So I've got super positive caster right now. Eventually, I'm going to correct that by moving the front piece, this piece, down and out like I was talking about earlier. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty good. It's very wide. Uh, these are my hypothetical setup off my three-wheeler. Uh, hopefully, it'll float really well. And hitch needs to come off. Um, hitches are ugly. But yeah, it's a pretty much a, it's a monster now. Snorkel came out good. Everything's sealed up. And it has an insane amount of front ground clearance because there's no front diff. So the frame is kind of sloped. Super cool looking right here. Gotta love that. Oh, yes. Very cool. But uh, we're doing some testing with it today. Probably try to take it on the lake. Do some other shenanigans. But it should be pretty cool. Um, the only other thing I did, I did the... Um, parking brake delete and then I take this thing and I bend it and flip it over to hold down the reverse pen so you can just grab it and click into reverse real easy it's a nice little trick I do on almost every Honda I buy also does a kickstart obviously it's like a big red or a 300 every bike should have a kickstart I don't care what anyone says um, yeah you can see my tire is painted like Tiffany's green someone did that to me they thought it was a joke I'm sure some of my friends when I find out who it is I'm gonna hold them down and paint their forehead Tiffany's green What's up guys, I just got another bike. This is a 1986 TRX 250, not to be confused with the TRX 250X, which is a sport quad, or the TRX 250R, which is a um, another sport quad that's two-stroke. This is just a TRX 250 4-Trax. Um, it's pretty cool. It's like basically a little utility bike. It's mostly based off of the Honda Big Red. It was sold from 1986 to 1989. I've um, wanted one for a long time, so I just think they're... I really like the plastics on it. I think it's a really cool, wacky-looking little bike. Um... I finally got a decent deal on one, and it's mostly complete. Had the original OEM manual and everything like that. Only thing I'm missing is this back cover. Got one on order, but it's a cool little bike, and uh, it's pretty healthy. Probably going to do a big working on and stuff because it does smoke a little bit. Not too bad for a 31-year-old bike. I mean, when you find a 31-year-old Can-Am. Anyways, but uh, yeah, so I'm running you over some interesting things on this bike. It's got the same front headlight setup kind of thing going on as a big red, where this comes off, right? It's got a little rubber mount, and there's about, uh, I don't know, eight feet of cable in here so you can use the headlight as like a work light. Um, it's got this wacky trailing arm front suspension, which is kind of like a Can-Am, <clears throat> unfortunately, but it's in the front so it makes it cool and wacky. And it mounts with these two bolts with this big carrier and it's all very beefy and hardcore and definitely overbuilt, which is pretty characteristic of an old school Honda. The brakes actually still work on this thing, which isn't hilarious, um, but it's a two wheel drive. Because there was never a diff, there's no four wheel drive part of this bike. It's got awesome ground clearance for a two wheel drive in the front. Um, almost like a tractor or something. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Uh, and these are only 22 inch tires in the front. It's got 22s in the front, 25s in the rear. So pretty interesting bike. Uh, I'm going to find a way to lift it, obviously, and ruin it. Um, drop this down, get some bigger shocks. Look how puny those shocks are. It's got two inches of travel right now. I'd like to get it, you know, closer to about four or five inches. That'd be so nice, right? Ride quality. Little tiny tie rod ends and, uh, joints. But as you can see, a lot of stuff on this bike's greasable. Grease joint, uh, greaser, greaser, greaser. I mean, this thing was definitely built for work. Um, you see the model right there, 1996. All right, a little brake distributor. Oh, yeah, that's very cool. It's got some neat stuff. The fuse box and everything is up here, which is kind of nice. It kind of keeps it high and dry. It's got a fuel gauge, which is rare on an old Honda. Um, hardly no old Honda, and I know has it that kind of a funky looking dash, but this is all very 300 big red looking. The frame itself was very big red looking also. It's got like one big tube coming down there. Uh, you can see that the uh, carburetor obviously needs to be rebuilt. Look how wet that thing is just dripping with gas. But the uh, air intake breathes through the frame. You can see where that bolts up right there. Um, so that'll be kind of cool to snorkel, make it real challenging, but whatever, I can handle it. The good thing is though, I was looking for a spare rear end for my 300. And this is the rear end I run on my 300. It's very similar to the big red rear end. It's the same gear ratio. And we all know that the weak point on the Honda 300 is the rear end. Um, so now I've got a spare rear axle assembly for my 300 and a bike to cruise around. But if I blow the 300 rear end, I can steal this one and put it on there. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a cool little bike. I'm going to try to put some 30s on it, put like a maybe a 4-inch lift or something. Um, make a stretch for it, which will be interesting because I've never really seen anyone build one of these. So it should be fun to do something wacky with it. And the 300 uses almost the same motor as the Big Red. This is the exact same motor, so now I've got three bikes with the same motor, so that's good. Um, and I can put a gear reduction in this thing, because a big red gear reduction fits it, obviously. Some of these parts out of here, I got the air box out, I got the gas tank out. You can do it with leaving these plastics on, 
this little top plastic is about to come off anyway, so it wouldn't have been much more to take it off. I didn't mess with the whole front fender to get the gas tank out. It's a pretty good sized gas tank, um, bigger than the Honda 300. You see how, flush, how far it goes up into here. Gas tank goes up to about right there. Pretty neat. Um, snorkel's funny. So it comes up here, goes into the frame, and then breathes. You know, you can see all the holes. You see all the holes right there? So that's where it sucks in air from. It's got you know these baffles built around it. Obviously, that's a nice idea, um, but I'm going to get rid of that immediately and snorkel it properly. But it's pretty neat how the snorkel does. This carburetor looks absolutely terrible. Um, this thing does have the bigger header that, um, than a 300, so that's good. And it also has the better cam and stuff, so pretty neat. Um, but really wacky looking frame and everything. It's very, very old school Honda. Um, the airbox though, instead of having a rubber piece on the airbox, it actually has this, which is nice because it comes with a little coupler. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use a one and a half inch regular coupler, but, um, one and a half inch pipe will butt up right to here with a coupler. So it's going to make that part of the snorkel pretty easy. Then the only trick with the snorkel is getting around the engine, which doesn't look like it's going to be that bad, honestly. I'm not going to be able to tuck it up here like with a 300 to make it invisible because the gas tank hangs down so much farther in the back. But um, it'll look pretty clean. These vent lines need to be snorkeled and all kinds of stuff. What a wacky looking swing arm design. Man, this thing is nasty. I wish I had degreased it before I started working on it, but lots of carb cleaner will do the trick, I'm sure.